invite uh, Dean Ma to present the topic on Senior Citizens Act. Most respected, honorable Mr. Justice R. Subramanian, sir. The backbone of Sri Aurobindo Institute for Legal Studies, Dr. J. Serial Vincent, sir. And also the Secretary Anil Kumar P. sir. Esteemed gathering, very happy to see that a combo of elderly and the youth, more of for my presentation. From the bottom of my heart, I really deem it a great privilege when I have been invited to address and to give an analysis on Senior Citizens Act by Dr. J. Cyril Matthews, <coughs> Matthias Vincent Sir. A very good morning to one and all present in this hall. And today is a great day. We term it either as Constitution Day or Samvidhan Divas. As the message that has been given by Honorable Mr. Justice or Subramanian Sir, don't give your parents. Give something else. Donate something else. That is something like by giving this message, Sir has given or made a foundation for my presentation. Thank you very much, Madam. The maintenance and welfare of parents and senior citizens at 2007, section after the section. Rather, I am standing in front of you to give an analysis about the existence of the Act. Fortunately or unfortunately, when we talk about the existence of the Act, when in the inaugural or in the orientation program for the law students, when a question has been posed, are you aware, like there is some legislation that is existing for the protection of the parents and senior citizens, most of the students will tell no. If it is the status of a law student, then we can easily imagine about the status of the layman of the country, the existence or non-existence of a legislation, the awareness has not been very well created among the people. And it is so very important that we need to create awareness among the people who are really there to exercise their rights. And I really feel very comfortable if I start my presentation with Matru Deva Bhava and Pitru Deva Bhava. We are living in a country where parents have been given their utmost supreme noble position. Then, where is the necessity of having a legislation that is specifically protecting the rights of elders earlier? We do have legislations in the form of criminal procedure code, probably few among you are law students, they may be knowing about section 125 of CRPC. Other than this, India is a country wherein personal laws do exist. According to Hindu Adoption and Maintenance Act, there are certain provisions specifically dealing with the protection of elderly, if, to correct myself, parents. If you observe any other personal law for that matter, according to Mullah, under Muslim law, the son do have a right to protect the parent, even if the parent is having money, not having money. If the parent is not able to maintain himself or herself, then it is mandatory for a son to take care of the child, take care of the parent. Then where is the necessity to have a special legislation in the form of a social legislation? And I appreciate like it is a progressive legislation when we talk about having a separate legislation. There are few things. When we talk about parents, every elder is not a parent, may not be a parent. Now when we talk about a childless elderly, there is a lacunae in our existing legislations wherein their power, their dignity has not been protected 
expressive. Now, when we talk about this particular legislation, I seek the attention of all the audiences to the title of the act. Here, the title has clearly reflected that it is not only about the parents, it is also about the senior citizens. So, this act is more wider in perspective, wherein a childless parent will fall under the category of a senior citizen. Then we need to define who is a senior citizen. It's very easy and simple to really understand who is a person or a senior citizen. A person who attains 60 years of age and above and a citizen of India is enough to claim their rights under this specific act. Whenever we are talking about a child, no matter what legislation it is, it will be talking about either a son or a daughter. Whether son or daughter alone constitutes child, if we observe this particular 2007 legislation, it also includes grandchild, granddaughter and grandson. They have been legally obligated under this legislation to maintain the parent. When we talk about a grandchild and granddaughter or a daughter or a son, obviously they must be major. Now coming to the second point, when we talk about maintaining of the elders or the parents and senior citizens, if at all there are no children, then what is the scenario? Whether this act is not applicable, it do has applicability in the form like the near relative also owes a duty to maintain that particular elderly. Near relative in which way we can connect it? We can connect it only in the way, one and only way with the, in relation to the property, what that particular relative is going to inherit from this senior citizen. Okay, so their liability is only to the extent of that, that, uh, I mean, the, that the level of inheritance. It is not like going beyond. Now again, obviously one question will raise in our mind, if a person doesn't have property, then what to do? No child, no property, then what is the scenario? Still we do have elderly like that, yes or no? Yes, it is. No, in those circumstances, this, under this particular legislation, the state government has been given a duty of establishing old age homes at least to one per district and they can take shelter and also they can avail the maintenance in those homes. Now the point is, whenever we are talking about this kind of situation, we all know that it is so very sensitive in a complex family structure in which we are living. We do respect our parents. Elderly are really a great part of our society. If we are looking into the statistics, probably we need to rely on 2011 statistics. According to the 2011 statistics, it is almost like 8.6% of our population are elderly. But we need to look up to the future. It is an estimate that by 2050, 20% of our Indian population will be elderly. We all know currently our country is enjoying with the maximum number of youth. The same thing will be applied to 2050, maybe 20% of the population will be in the scale of that 60 plus. Now when we are observing the statistics, the statistics are very welcoming in the point of view or when we are discussing about the technological advancement or the availability of the medical facility and the growing in life expectancy. But at the same time, when we talk about the maintenance of the elderly, it is a frightening kind of thing because of lot many changes that are happening to our society. You can give any name, maybe there is, there, are, there is very less number of joint family system that is prevailing or 
the existence of nuclear family or because of globalization, urbanization or modernization and fortunately or unfortunately we are having more kind of single parenting these days. Whether all these things are causing some sort of nexus with the maintenance of the elderly, obviously our answer need to be yes. In those circumstances, whether this piece of legislation, again I am repeating, a social legislation, a progressive legislation is able to attain the task for which it has been enacted. We also need to understand few sections, few important sections in the 2007 Act. Before that, we need to know like whether under our constitution or under the international instruments, the older persons have been given a proper significance. Their problems, I mean to say. So being students, you all need to know right from the origin. The origin, we can trace it back, may not be too old, but the international year for older persons was 1999. What was so quick? We do have a national policy for older persons in the year 1999. Subsequently, when we observe the international declarations, the first assembly, the first world assembly that had happened in Vienna in the year 1982, paved a path to have a lot of understanding about the problems of older persons and also to give importance to the issue basing upon the U.S. tasks, UN, UN tasks, sorry. So when we talk about the U.N. has given five kind of terms to give or to keep the elderly in a particular frame wherein they will enjoy their life. Enjoyment is enjoying a normal life. Among all those, one term that is dignity, dignity of the elderly or the dignity of the older persons. Dignity includes everything. When we talk about right to life under Article 21 of our Indian Constitution, right to life is living with human dignity. It is not like living like a human being, like an animal existence, right? Now when we talk about the term dignity, the significance or the kind of understanding about the older person's requirements as triggered. So, to make a note of the second declaration that has been made in Madrid in the year 2002. That is where not only the basic minimals to the elderly alone not has been identified as a requirement of the elderly, there it has been identified the well-being of the elderly. Well-being is also being given lot of importance. Just having food, cloth, shelter, you know. More than that, a human <coughs> being, to live like a human being, need a little more than that. So according to this particular legislation, the child has had a legal obligation to maintain his or her parents. <coughs> Here in the very context, let me tell you, the flaw that is happening with this legislation also simultaneously, the daughter-in-law and son-in-law not included under the definition of child. Appreciated? Accepted? Whether they are not child? Whether they don't get into the ambit of the child? Yes or no? You can talk. With the permission of honorable justice. We should have been. We should have been. It is not there. But when we talk about right to claim maintenance, daughter in law can claim. Right to claim property, daughter in law can claim. Correct. Now, when we are giving up the right, we also need to give them the duty. So, this particular aspect is missing. 
in the current legislation. <laughs> Likewise, under section 5 of this act, an application can be filed not to the civil court but to the maintenance tribunal. Maintenance tribunal. Maintenance tribunals need to be established by the state government. Under article, I mean, under section 32, class 1 of this legislation, state governments have been directed to frame the rules, relevant rules, to make this legislation applicable because it is a central legislation. What is the scenario? Most of the states have made necessary action towards or in this direction and they have established old age homes including Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. And along with that, this, the rules have been framed. When we talk about the tribunal, whether tribunal is a court, that is a separate area of discussion. Why am I talking here? Because a lot of writs have been filed to state the very fact that no, 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 tribunal is not a court. But the fact is like, after being decided by various high courts and in few cases by the Supreme Court, tribunal is a court and the maintenance tribunal is given with the power. It is like a medley of CRPC and CPC. The tribunal under this act, they can take oath, record evidence and also give the order. The best part of this legislation is there is one aspect of conciliation which is absolutely absent in any other legislation like under 125 CRPC and all there is no such thing because of the sensitivity of the thing on one hand on the other hand it is not only basing on the sentimental relationships children and parents have no it is also basing on so many other dharma shastras whenever there is a dispute the best thing is to mediate to conciliate, correct? And to come arrive at a good solution wherein there will be win-win situation. When there is, in the absence of conciliation, when somebody is knocking the door of the judiciary, things have not been received very proper in our society. Now the thing is, when there is conciliation officer, the matter will be referred to the conciliation officer after the application that has been made under section 5. The conciliation officer in the presence of the children and also the elderly will also be there, the parents rather, they will be discussing about the matter, they may come to a conclusion and the report will be submitted to the tribunal. Now come the difficulty if the parent want to go or they, they are not happy with the decision or the order, they, they really want to go to the, go on appeal. The biggest difficulty lies or it lies in section 16 clause 1 of this particular legislation wherein it has been clearly mentioned if the parents if they can go but the point is nowhere in the legislation it has been mentioned even the aggrieved party or the party the other party can also go on appeal this has led to a new one right many writs have been filed by stating that their right has been violated because tribunal is a judiciary or quasi judicial body. Now when we talk about the decision, there should be an appeal. That appeal or the right to, right to appeal must be there with both the parties or at least to the aggrieved party if the child is an aggrieved party, correct? Now the point is when the opposite party other than the parents have not been given this right, they started filing the petition that this is violation of their principles of natural justice and many other things. Now when, have, when they have been given an opportunity, there was a lot of discussion about this. Apparently the section was very specifically mentioning the parents can go on appeal. That means impliedly the opposite party cannot go on an appeal. If we observe the interpretation of the statutes, probably law students may understand a bit more. When we talk about the interpretation of the statutes and we are looking into Mimamsa, there are three types. Number one is 
like having a proper understanding that is about the conciliation between the parties the other one is wherein there is a rift there is no conciliation kind of thing under those circumstances they we need to switch over to the situation wherein justice prevails or we need to identify that particular part and voting must be given to that part that means acceptance should be given to that part and the third part is we call it as badha that is something like matching with the system of ultraviolence now when we talk about all these concepts together the decision of various high courts has clearly stated or mentioned that it is not like very intentionally that has been not mentioned under the legislation even the opposite party the aggrieved party can also knock the door of the judiciary on appeal so whenever we are talking about the implementation part there is legislation what i am trying to make you understand is when we are trying to implement the legislation lot of hurdles have come in the way but that have been very intelligently removed by our judiciary wherein lot of understanding and justification has been given to the very concept so along with us whenever we are talking about providing maintenance the maintenance can be given as an interim maintenance and almost like if you are observing the provisions under section 125 crpc the same thing has been implemented under this particular piece of legislation wherein the interim maintenance will be given for example after interim maintenance has been granted subsequently it has been found out like this case is not eligible for granting the maintenance in those circumstances there is a protection that has been provided in the form of non refunding of the already granted interim maintenance so it is a it is a kind of protection that has been laid out for protecting the senior citizens and parents the tribunal do have a right under the legislation to alter the maintenance order the order can be altered basing upon the situations or the evidences that have been procured, procured during i cannot use the term trial i believe my lord so now when we are talking about this agreement or when the application has been made when people are in front of the conciliation officer and they are able to make out the things that has been very well appreciated under this legislation now comes the very very important point that is section 23 section 23 of 2007 legislation under section 23 if a transfer has been made by the senior citizen or the elderly or the parent the tribunal can declare it as void provided if the transfer has been made it may be a gift it may be a sale it may be of any kind of transfer that is accepted under the transfer of property act even if it, it can be even a license if at all such transfer has been made where after the enactment of this act that is after 2007 with a specific mention that the party the transferee who is getting the property is making out a point that are giving consent by stating that they will be taking care of the maintenance of that particular elderly subsequently they are not taking care of the elderly under those circumstances that transfer can be declared void by the tribunal tribunal it is not like once the transfer has been made so they cannot revert it back no elderly or the maintenance part of elderly has been taken care by the drafters very carefully and this has been very specifically mentioned under section 23 of the welfare of senior citizens act now whenever we are talking about establishment of the old age homes whether it is properly happening 
being part of society have we observed we we do observe that many many more old age homes are getting increased in private sector or in the form of non governmental organizations i am asking about the establishment of old age homes by the respective state governments even if the governments are able to establish the maintenance part of the home that is impliedly the maintenance of the elderly about the entertainment there is their stay stay is the decent stay when we talk about the thing the underlying factor is it must be a dignified life so obviously one can understand like the implementation part is always at stake when we talk about the establishment of one thing or the other in our society when we talk about elderly we respect elderly there are many more uh, provisions like section 32 class 1 wherein the state governments have been given space to create uh, rules many state governments are already framed the rules i am not telling the system is not working you do work whether it is efficiently working i have my own doubts probably all of us so when we talk about the implementation part of this welfare legislation that has been brought with a great aim to give dignity to the elderly in our society i am using the term repeatedly elderly though it was not very specifically mentioned under the act i mean to say when we talk about parents senior citizens everybody it will be an umbrella term under which we really want to protect them the constant increase in the private old age homes is highly alarming as rightly pointed out by our honorable judge sir parents have been sent for the sake of an inconvenience or for the sake of their own convenience rather when they have not been provided the right with the rights what they deserve not only in the form of maintenance but also in the form of human rights all said and done one point is sure that parents will be more comfortable in their respective homes rather than in old age homes however comfortable they are they may be with all amenities but their heart will be in their home i am using the term home not house okay so all said and done my request to all of you because it is a cluster group of so many colleges so many students from different different walks of life and from different disciplines kindly spread the awareness because it is also one of the provision of this particular legislation and direction to the state governments to spread awareness about the existence of this legislation and the provisions of this legislation i was so very uh, how can i say like i was so very happy when i got invitation to talk about the analysis on this particular the help of you people we will be reaching to the various to various parts of society by enlightening them and above all it is our duty to enlighten the elderly parents senior citizens to understand about their rights there are many more provisions under this legislation so section by section if if you want to really make uh, understand if you are sharing your mail ids to dr siril sir i'll be sharing the material whatever i have prepared whatever little research i have done in this particular area for the sake of presentation with a great hope like we all will have a society to be frank maybe old age home less society our society will be getting the blessings of our roots respect the roots thank you very much ma'am for a wonderful presentation ma'am with the limited time you clearly explained us the entire act and uh, the challenges in protecting senior citizens from abuse and also the importance of the act to ensure maintenance and welfare of senior citizens and to protect them from the abuse and neglect 
and I saw you becoming very emotional at the conclusion part. To that extent, the topic is very near to your heart, and I hope that we all will uh, listen and uh, implement whatever you have stated. And um, and you made it very clear that every senior citizen has a right to live with dignity, and it is possible only when the society in total and the children particularly understand their ethical and moral responsibility. Thank you very much, ma'am.